Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in New York. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm uh, enjoying the fact that this is my last day. Tomorrow morning, I'm supposed to go back to the hospital or to the doctor, and they're planning on removing this catheter for the third time. Hopefully, the third time will be a charm. I know the internal bleeding is for the most part gone, and so maybe this time I'm going to get it done, which would be great because tomorrow evening, I believe, starts the Feast of Trumpets, so I'll be made whole just in time for that. Um, friend, I just wanted to tell you, I, you know, I'm always talking about things that just sound absolutely crazy on here. You know, I, I tell you things that if you don't really look up, you're just not going to believe. I'm always telling you to get a book with what, a Bible with what Jesus said and read, right? So it's important you get a red letter edition because that's how you know that what I'm saying is true. And if you don't, then you won't ever know the truth about the things Jesus said. Because I do say some pretty outlandish things on here compared to what religion believes, right? And so I wouldn't expect you to believe the things I say unless you go read Jesus and see that what I'm saying is true. And that's what really matters because the truth is... Jesus told us we were supposed to be like him. You know, he said, call no man teacher, I'm your teacher. And that a student is not greater as his teacher, it's enough to be like him. So that's what I'm always doing so that I can maintain this relationship with the Holy Spirit, which is the voice of God. It doesn't matter who you believe or how you believe it comes, because Jesus himself outright said that the Father says it to him, he says it to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit says it to us. And then he said when we go before our judges not to think about what to say, and the Holy Spirit will give us what to say at that very hour, meaning that he'll, it'll just pop out of our mouth. So I don't, as you know, I don't ever plan on what to say. Uh, I just get on here and do it. And trust that my Father's going to make it all work out right. And sometimes I realize that it, it doesn't matter. I don't want you to think anything of me. I want you to hear what I'm saying and then go read what Jesus said so that you can find this higher truth that will bring you the kingdom right here, right now. Because I've told you that Jesus said the kingdom would not be said to be here or there, but the kingdom of God would be said to be within us. So that's where I want you to find it. Because I have it. It doesn't matter what I'm going through, trials and tribulations in this world, friend. I've got the voice of God in my head. I don't care what you call it, whether you call it the voice of God, whether you call it Jesus talking to me, or the Holy Spirit. If I'm talking to one, I'm talking to the other, according to what I just explained to you that you will find in the Bible, Jesus said. So people get all hung up on all this technicality stuff and then dicker with each other over it instead of loving one another. See, I don't care what your traditions are. I love you, If period. I, even if you're not Christian, I love you. I don't care who you are. I love you because you're my father's child. You know, if if Christ was in the Father and the world was made through Christ, then I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. But even if you're not Christian, he's still in you. You know, God's in everybody. He sees everything. He, he knows all. He was at the end in the beginning. Right? So he knows everything. He is omnipresent. You know? So I hope you're really putting all that together and understanding that because that's all biblical. It said right in the beginning of John that the world was made through Christ. So, you know, but you guys want to take one thing literal and not another. And sometimes, I, you know, to me, I don't care whether you take that literal or not. That's up to you. It has brought me the kingdom because then it really made me start hanging all the laws and the prophets on only two commandments because Jesus himself said that one was like the other. So if I don't love my neighbor as myself, then I'm not loving my father with my whole heart, mind, and soul. And if I judge my neighbor... I judged my father for allowing it because he knew the end in the beginning. So when I started looking at the world through those things and I started being in the world but not of it, well then I started seeing I was able to receive the Holy Spirit in a whole different kind of way because I'm not looking how to justify my judgment. I've got no judgment to justify. But I do have to tell you that, you know, that the words in red have already judged you. He said, don't judge, only the Father knows how to judge. Then he said, the Father won't judge you, he sent me to judge you. Then he said to the Pharisees, 
I won't judge you, but if I did judge you, I'd judge you rightly because I was judging you by my father's standards. And then in John, he said that, he said, I came to save you. I won't judge you, but another will come. So the other comes and tells you that the word already judged you because it was the words he spoke that were your judgment. So you should really get to know Christ because he told you a slave to sin has no permanent place in the kingdom. Because if you want to hate your neighbor and judge your neighbor and want justice upon them, then because my father knew the end in the beginning and created him anyway, you're calling justice upon my father. So you're supposed to love and forgive your neighbor, which is the same as loving and forgiving the father, even though my father doesn't need forgiveness. He does this all for a worthy purpose. I've told you that. And I've explained it, and you might not believe it, and that's okay. You don't have to believe me. But you should really evaluate the things I'm saying and see if they aren't what Jesus said. Because everything I tell you, friend, goes right back to that scripture. So these Pharisees are using Old Testament stuff to make up new covenant rules, and that is not what Jesus said. And then they're using Paul to say that Jesus was a liar, and you can't do that either. Either Christ is the king, the truth, and the life, or he's not. So that's who you need to get to really know. So that's what I'm always telling you is please get to know Christ. So on the last day, when the word judges you, because I'm going to tell you the way this is going to kind of work. What happens when you have to look at all the thoughts you're trying to hide from? Are you going to condemn yourself? Is that voice in your head, that serpent, that, that thought of Satan? That's your judge. If you're doing things that make you feel guilty, then... It's going to judge you on the last day. That is your judge. It's in your own head. But you don't have to keep that judge. You don't have to keep that because you can receive the Holy Spirit. And even though that judge will hang around and try to condemn you for stuff because you're doing the right thing and you're in relationship with my Father through the Holy Spirit, well, then you can ask the Father for forgiveness and know you have it because Christ told you you did. And the better you get to know Him, you'll get the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, that'll come to you and tell you even greater things. And Jesus said all that. So everything I'm telling you is scriptural, right? So I hope you're not thinking that I'm not accurate because it's not in the scripture, because it is. It's just everything's hidden. And I don't want you to believe me. I want you to believe him. But I also want you to think about something. A lot of people blame Judas. I know you, you guys have heard me tell you that I'm the spirit of Judas. Most people don't believe it. I really don't personally care. It doesn't matter. Jesus and Judas created Yom Kippur. Did you ever ask yourself why it is that you? I need to notice that all these Christians are always can't believe that the Jews wouldn't believe in Jesus. But if you go look, why is it that it was hidden that Jesus was born in Nazareth where the Messiah was supposed to come from? You realize my father did all this stuff to make sure that they didn't realize he was born in Nazareth. Everybody thought he was from Galilee, right? And Jesus never told him any different. If Jesus wanted them to believe in him, why didn't he tell them? Why didn't he explain it? Jesus said that you don't put new wine in an old wineskin lest the wine would, uh, the old wine skin would burst, and then both the wine and the skins would be ruined, right? He said, you don't take and put a new patch on an old garment, or else when you wash the garment, the patch will shrink and then pull away from the garment, you know, and, and both would be ruined. So what he was telling you is that they weren't ready for him. He was not here for them, even though he was here for them. So he came at a specific time, and I've explained this to you, but while I'm explaining that, I want you to see why it is he came and why it is he didn't reveal who he was in such a way that they would actually believe it. Because they needed to crucify him so that he could die for us and for them, because he was doing both at the same time. Because literally it told you that Barabbas was in jail for killing in an uprising, and that there were more troops entering into Israel. And if you go look at the true history of Pilate, um, you will know that he was, that Pontius Pilate was not a character that would have just tolerated their insanity. And in the end, he would have murdered them all off 
you know, he would have cut the dead branch off the vine of Rome because that was his job is to, to make sure that, you know, the job of Israel was to pay Rome taxes. That's the reason they conquered places, right? So they were being unproductive. And so therefore they were a dead branch on the vine of Rome and Rome was going to gather it up and cast it into the fire. So in order to stop that from happening and for my father to re-divert things the way he wanted it done, he sent Christ then at that moment. That's why he sent him them then. This all works out perfect. It's not that he's not also our Passover lamb, but he was also our ultra good Yom Kippur, right? So he took all the sin and put it on Judas so that no one was responsible for his death. Because if you recall correctly, it said Pilate and Herod became friends at his crucifixion. And it also said that the um, crowd and the Pharisees yelled, we have no king but Caesar. So what he was sent, what that means is they were re-swearing their allegiance to Rome, right? And therefore it gave Pilate a way out of what he might have had to do. And I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me. I can't prove this to you like I can't prove anything else to you. But if you look in the Gospels, you're going to see it's all there. That these things just aren't, you know, far-fetched. That if you really look at the words... You know, if you look at the Gospels and these things, you'll see that. You'll see how these things work out. And I myself do a lot of research, not just in the Bible, but because I want to know my father, I, want, I watch all kind of documentaries on Jesus, on the proof of Jesus, on the proof of no Jesus, because, you know, they're always trying to disprove him. But, you know, friend, I got so much faith, and I, the Holy Spirit dwells in me and talks to me, and I talk to him, and... So I don't care, you're not going to take my faith by trying to prove to me that Jesus didn't exist because you just simply can't do it because I know it in my heart that he did. And I've seen way too much in that Bible to know that it all is working out perfectly and there's a hidden code there that I've uh, posted that video in my clues to the kingdom and my proof of God. There are codes in the Bible, friend. Uh, many different people have found these different codes and there's just no way that it's not true. The tour also. So you can tell me what you want and say that it's not true, but I know it is. So I stand on the rock of Christ, and I know he's the truth and the life. And I'm convinced and know that if my father wanted what he wanted in that Bible, in that Bible, that he could get it there because he's in everyone's mind. So he could literally get them to write whatever he wanted in that Bible. That's the truth. So you say, oh, well, it was written by men. No, it was written by God. God himself... Um, through the Holy Spirit, wrote that Bible. And so I just absolutely believe that. And I know you have translations that have words different and this and that, and I'm not arguing all that. You know what I mean? But if you don't believe in the Bible, then you're never going to believe what Christ said is true. And you're going to really need to believe that Christ, what Christ said is true in order to receive this kingdom, because he is the truth and the life. So I'm telling you, it's, you really ought to check that out. So, the Jews weren't supposed to turn then. They're going to turn at the end of the age, just like it was written in Revelation. But, as you know, the Jews did not know they got Yom Kippur, and that is their ritual of atonement. Jesus hid all of this. It was not an accident that he didn't reveal to them the fact that they could prove that he was the Messiah. Because if he wanted it proven, he could have proven it, but he didn't. In fact, I was just I was watching a reading the other day uh, where they were talking about him, a prophet from Galilee, you know, and he could have told them that he was from Nazareth. So there's just all these different things. Jesus literally set himself up to go to that cross. It was not Judas's fault. It was not Rome's fault. It was not the Pharisees' fault. Christ went on that cross for us so that we could know the love of the Father and that we were forgiven through his sacrifice. We needed that. I needed that, friend. Because I have that, I know the love of my Father, the love of the Son, and therefore I accept the forgiveness that I've been given because he's given it to me. That is a fact. So I don't have to be afraid anymore, friend. That cat that I told you has kittens in the garage, she's transporting them right now. So it turns out 
I don't know why, but she's decided that this garage isn't safe, and now she's moving them to a new secret place. So I wish I could move the camera, but by the time I do, it'll be gone. So there she goes with kitten number two, and I hear kitten number three back there. So I know she at least has three kittens now. I only knew she had two. I think I see two back there. It looks like she had four again, like she did before. So if you hear all this meowing going on, that's the kitten's mom's moving them on out. So anyway, the purpose of the world, friend, is to come to know love by experience. That's what Jesus was saying. But I'm explaining all these things to you because it's important that you believe that Christ is king because he is going to be the king. And so therefore, not only do you need to love your neighbor as yourself, you have to accept Christ as your savior because if you won't, believe in his forgiveness, you're not going to give forgiveness to your neighbor when they condemn you. And, you know, things are getting worse and worse, friend. You're going to need to find some forgiveness for what's coming up. If you can't see it, I don't know why. I've been explaining that to you, too, but I'm not really here to talk about that today. I wanted you to realize that all of this stuff was hidden to the end of the age so that you all could make a free will choice. My father wanted you to choose him because you love him and he sent Christ to represent him so that you could love Christ and therefore love him through Christ. So I love my father through Christ. You know, but this thought of Satan has to exist, this thought of selfishness. It's what gives us our identity. You know, you, you quite often Christians don't think about what Jesus said and what he meant and why it is this thought of Satan would be left to, I mean, because my father could get rid of it with a thought right? I mean, all of creation is in my father, and Satan was cast into creation. So Satan is in my father also. You understand that, right? So, but he isn't allowed into the throne room, meaning outside of creation, because its purpose is in creation, and that is to give you a free will choice, to choose love over selfishness. My father only lets your neighbor hungry so that you can feed them. He lets them naked so that you can clothe them. If you have more, you have more to give to those that have less. And if you do it in the name of the Father, then you do it for the love of your neighbor and my Father. And therefore, my Father's glorified in it. And then you get to know love by experience. So you and the Father both get to know love by experience by making this choice. And that's the purpose of the world. You can't not have a dichotomy and have free will. So there has to be love and selfishness. And when you leave selfishness unchecked, it turns evil. But I also want to explain to you, I've explained it to you in a lot of other videos, but I'm going to give it to you in this one today too also. And that is how you know that Jesus and Judas created Yom Kippur. And that is that Jesus took his bread, which was his body, and he dipped it in his wine, which was his blood. So he soaked up his blood onto the bread, which was his body, and he handed it to Judas. And when he handed it to Judas... It said that Satan entered into him, so that means Satan wasn't there to begin with, because I can't say I'm going to go get in a car if I'm in the car already, right? So that means that he passed Satan into Judas. And if you go look at the other place where Judas betrayed Jesus, in the Bible that I looked at, I specifically saw where it said Satan entered into him, and then he went to betray Jesus. So once again, Satan was cast into him to go fulfill a task, and that was to betray Christ because that was his job, because that was the purpose of the wilderness goat. So when Jesus handed Judas the bread, he said, Not me, Lord. And Jesus said, Go do what you must do. He cast him from the lot. He cast him into the wilderness. Judas is your wilderness goat. So, But that was his job because he needed to take all the blame that was the whole point of Yom Kippur, right? The two goats, you take the blood of the altar goat, you dump, you dump the blood onto the wilderness goat, uh, and then you cast the sin out into the wilderness. So Jesus, Judas took the sin of Israel and cast it into the wilderness. He's the one who carried it into the wilderness. Jesus paid the price. Judas carried away the debt. Get it? It's, this is all biblical, friend. You can go look and see that what I'm telling you is no lie. It's all there. My father gave it to me. 
I, I got that in the download, and then later I, I kind of knew I kind of knew that I was something like a wilderness goat, but I didn't understand it all at the time because he didn't tell me. But then later he did show me after he showed me that that I am the spirit of Judas. I was the one who carried the, the dead away from from Israel. I don't. You don't have to believe that, friend. I wouldn't believe it if I were you, really, right? I mean, I, that, like I said, I say things on here that sound so bizarre and so far-fetched. Why should you believe it? But I don't care whether you believe that. But if you go understand that, you can see that the Jews weren't going to turn because they didn't get Yom Kippur, which is their ritual for atonement. So, you know, he, let, he carried the dead away. You know, he died so they didn't have to. So his blood went over their door. But that didn't give, they didn't know they got atonement. So now they can know that, they, that, that he atoned for their sins for what they did. So now when the Jews start understanding this, they're going to start turning. I believe that. I mean, do you think it's a coincidence that we're here at the end of the age and the Jews have not really turned on a mass level? That's because Yom Kippur is their required ritual of atonement, my friend. Right? So I hope you get that. So Jesus fulfilled that. He gave them, he completed the ritual for them. They don't know that yet. Except for those of you that do. I do try to hashtag things Hebrew and Jewish tradition and things sometimes. And I don't know whether Jews hear it and believe it or not. That's not my job. I never expected anyone to believe it. My father told me that I would be called a liar. I would be hated and despised. And I said I'd still do it for him because I love him. He's worth it. So this world looks insane. And, you know, I've been explaining all kinds of things to you. So I don't necessarily expect you to believe everything I say. But what I do expect you to believe is that if you say Christ is your Savior, that you're going to go get yourself a red-letter edition of the Bible and start reading these words in red, friend, because that is the words that's going to judge you at the end of the age. So if you're out there sinning against your neighbor, well, my father told you a slave to sin has no permanent place in the kingdom. He told you through Christ. So if hurting your neighbor is acceptable for your own selfishness, then there's a price for that. So you have to make up a choice. You're going to have to choose. Are you going to choose sin or are you going to choose the kingdom? Are you going to choose love or selfishness? My Father will come to you and give you the Holy Spirit, which is the voice of God. It doesn't, like I said, since it says it's the Father says it to the Son, and the Ho Son says it to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit says it to you, the Holy Spirit is the voice of God. It doesn't matter. My Father has to do all this for you so that you can comprehend and understand it in such a way that you would believe the, the Holy Spirit when it comes to you, right? But my Father, all of creation is in Him. He's, he's omnipresent. He's beyond our understanding. You know, there was only God in the beginning. Where do you think God put everything? If God was it and He created creation, then there was no creation for Him to put you in. So you are literally inside the mind of God. Understand it that way. Jesus told you the fathers of spirit. He wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. That is to adore him in thought and love. We are, uh, we, what we think about is what our mind becomes full of and then that fills our spirit up. So we become the spirit of love or the spirit of selfishness. I'm not talking perfection here, friend. You, you live in a fallen world. But Jesus said, be in the world, but not of it. So I spend a lot of my time in my secret place with my father to keep myself in line. Because things come to me tempting me to return to the world. Sometimes um, I get all kind of temptations going on around me, friend. You know, sometimes, like I told you, there's things that I used to do that were wrong that I enjoyed, that my flesh enjoyed. And if I listen to my flesh, I'll return to that. So I need to spend a lot of time with my Father so that when these temptations come to me, I can put them before Him and He can, me, Him and I can talk about it so that He can help remind me that if I go do those things, I'm going to be cast back into hell, a state or place of mental suffering. And then because I'm willing to cause my neighbor suffering, his child, well, then he's going to say a slave to sin has no permanent place in the kingdom. 
So I have to not sin against my neighbor and do the best to follow the Holy Spirit to the best of my knowledge and act in faith. But I have the Holy Spirit in my mind that tells me what to do, and I know it by its fruit because I have Christ. It testifies to me about Christ. Everything I do that seems crazy has a purpose, and he showed me it. Most things I understand the purpose of what I'm doing. That doesn't mean you're going to love the purpose because I'm not here to unite your house. I'm here to divide it. You know, your traditions stink. You, have, you won't even love one another. The, Christ, the body of Christ has no strength left. It's got, the body of Christ has cancer, friend. You all have turned on one another because you're not listening to Christ. You're listening to a bunch of Pharisees tell you a bunch of half-tongue wiggle. You know, the serpent in the garden wiggled half a tongue. That's what they're doing. They're lying to you. They're not telling you the truth about any of it. Listen to Christ. Believe the Holy Spirit's going to come to you and start believing that what Jesus said was true. He told you that heaven and earth would pass away, but his words would not. So start believing Christ and stop believing your preachers. Don't even believe me. If you can't find the things that I said in the Bible then don't believe me. I don't care. Go seek the Holy Spirit. Believe in Jesus. This isn't about me. It's about Him. The whole Bible was about Jesus, right? You get that. I hope so. Right? Because everything was about Him because He came to represent my Father, and the truth is it's all about my Father. And that is so that He might know love by experience, and I love Him for it. Even though I can't be... with be, unless my father is, but my father is. He will always be. And so therefore, my father can exist without me, but I can't exist without him, and therefore I should give him the glory and the love for the existence he's given me. Now, I used to have an existence I didn't love, but that was because I wouldn't listen to what Christ said, and I kept choosing selfishness over love. My life sucked. I'm not lying to you, friend. That's what happens. I was feeling guilty all the time for the things I was doing. I was justifying it, like everybody else. I'm just not justifying it anymore. I'm not going to hurt my neighbor because it hurts my father. I'm going to love my neighbor so that I can love all of my father. That's it. It's that simple. But you have to understand this in Scripture because you won't believe me. But that's why I'm always talking about what Jesus said. so that Because sometimes the Holy Spirit will put different things he said together. There was a time I said, and I still think I just said it not too long ago, that Jesus said, Oh, what was it? That before him, the kingdom suffered violence and was taken by force, but after him it wouldn't. He went as far as saying that those that already had a seat at the table were going to be thrown out and enter rightly. If you go look in the Bible, you're not going to find that statement. And a woman that listens to my videos corrected me on that. And I went to looking in the Bible, and I couldn't find it either. I said, I know the Holy Spirit said that through me, and I didn't understand it. I said, and I know the statement's true, but I'm not seeing it. Well, what I noticed later, and then the Holy Spirit showed me what he was doing, and then I informed her again. Friends, let me explain it to you. So Jesus said that before um, John, the kingdom suffered violence. Well, Christ came to bring the kingdom and to teach you the truth of my Father. And he told you that you were supposed to turn the other cheek. And he said, offenses must come, but woe to those who bring them. So therefore... After John, which is when Christ came, the kingdom is not to suffer violence anymore for those that choose the kingdom. So you're going to feel guilty, which means you're going to lose the kingdom you've gained if you go hurting people and choose selfishness over love, right? So that's what he was talking about. He said the kingdom was in you, so it's not about the kingdom there. He even said, and where he said about throwing people out of the kingdom was when he was talking when... Um, the Roman uh, centurion came to him in faith, and he said, you don't even have to come under my roof. There he said that you know, he seen no greater faith in Israel, and that um, those that already had a seat at the table were going to be thrown out of the kingdom, right? And then if you, when I say enter rightly, well, right in the Bible, it says in the church to Philadelphia, Jesus says, to he that overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will go out no more, meaning not again. So therefore, that means that if he threw them out of the kingdom for violence to make them enter rightly, then that's 
being kind of said in that statement to the church to Philadelphia. You don't have to believe my truth is true, friend, but you can go find all these different statements, and all these things are things Jesus said. So it makes sense to me that the Holy Spirit puts that together in my mind and shows me that to be the truth. Jesus told you that the Holy Spirit would give me even greater truths than he did. So he does that by giving me things and puts them together. You know, you believe that the dead in Christ rise before his return. Well, how many of you that are dead in Christ still have to rise? Because you chose selfishness over love. My Father's going to give you an opportunity at the end to make that switch if you want. But if you won't listen to me and you won't abide in what Jesus said, then you're not going to enter the kingdom because you're not in the spirit of love. You know, your, your mind is full of selfishness and therefore your soul has filled up with it. You're the spirit of selfishness. And therefore, you cannot enter the kingdom because Christ said so. Because a slave to sin has no permanent place in the kingdom. It's not about perfection. It's about getting in relationship with my father so that he can talk to you and then you can talk to him about the thoughts you're having and then he'll take the thoughts from you. But if, you can only do that if you know Jesus inside out, upside down and backwards so that my father can testify to you about him through the Holy Spirit, right? The voice of God. So that's what I'm always trying to get you to do. You don't have to believe me. You have to really get to know him. You can check out and see if the things I'm saying are there. Like the, the Judas thing is hidden within the Gospels. It's not just in one Gospel. My father hid everything for a purpose. And that was so that you wouldn't see it until it, he was ready for you to see it. So now you go look and see if you see what I see. If not, you can call me a liar. I don't care. I forgive you for you know not what you do. This is what the Holy Spirit believed, told me. And since he gives me greater truths, I absolutely believe what he's given me. It makes complete sense. It makes sense of that law. That is the reason that when the Pharisees said, let his blood be put on our head, that he didn't have to kill him instantaneously. When he died, Data had to die for that, friend. He, my father would have lost all the Pharisees and the law and the temple and everything all at once. And instead, 40 years later, you know, the temple fell and they got scattered. But, you know, the laws and the traditions are maintained. The, the, the priests of the temple still exist, right? They literally, uh, I, you, got to, you have to research, do some research, Frank, because I can't remember exactly where I found them. But the priesthood, the, the Levites still exist, and they were living on a specific island. It's pretty crazy. My father's pulling this all back together. I'm telling you so. And so when, when I look at the miracles that he's done and I see the way he's hid all this from us and it's all showing up and you could be looking and you would just find so much wonder in the things you'd find. So I spend my whole life now thinking about Jesus and seeking the Holy Spirit to give me another wonderful kernel of truth. I just love it. it it's wonderful to me, right? So... The Jews are going to turn because they got Yom Kippur and now they know it. If I'm telling the truth, go look in the Bible and see if I am. Go look throughout the Gospels and see if that was, because it's not in one spot, like I said. Judas only said, not me, Lord, in one Gospel, right? So my father took pieces of it and hid it. Those Gospels have hidden things and my father can put it together for you. I can't. I'm not that smart. But my father's brilliant, and he gives it to me, because I trust him, right? Because Christ told me to. He said the Holy Spirit would give me greater truths. So I trust him to do it. Whatever truth he needs to give me, he'll give to me. I want you to believe that for yourself, too. Believe, friend. Soak yourself in the Spirit by getting to know Christ and doing the things he asked. There is an, and the kingdom is right here for you to be had, but you have to abide in Christ. You have to spend time in your secret place. If you want the world more than you want my father, you're going to get the world, not my father. And then you're not going to get the kingdom there because you didn't seek it here because Jesus literally laid it out for you. He told you, if you hear my sayings and put them into practice, you will build your house on a rock. If not, when the storm hits, end of the age, your house is going to fall. All of you that were preaching righteousness are going to go around killing each other to to, over food and scraps. You know what I mean? So it's time to stop that. He told you the Pharisees owe a greater debt. When, you find, when a lot of the church figures out that all these Pharisees have been lying to them, the truth is, it's not the Pharisees' fault, the Christian Pharisees. 
it's your fault for listening to them. But because you, they have let you just keep looking at the plank in your neighbor or speck in your neighbor's eye instead of the plank of your own. When, when all of a sudden they realize they're going to ride through hell, they're not going to. Their thought of Satan is going to get them to look at the speck in their Christian Pharisee's eye instead of the plank in their own, and then they're going to want to take their anger out on, on these preachers, right? I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. Go look. He said all this. He told you that the Pharisees owe a greater debt. So those that have been preaching false gospel and not teaching the truth Christ taught, well, those when they discover that, that you buried them with them, with you, they're going to be mad, right? So I'm telling you, don't believe in me. Believe in Christ. He's the king. He's the coming king. He gave you kingdom rules. Believe. Believe in him. No one else, not even me. He said, call him teacher. Call no man teacher. So I'm not your teacher. Christ is. And he's got, his red letters are in that book. Right? So that's the, that's the beautiful thing. You never have to believe a word I say. You just have to go read what Jesus said and see if what I'm saying is true. All right, friend. We just know this. I love you because my Father loves you. I'm not saying all this out of judgment. I'm saying this because I want all of you to enter the kingdom at the end of the age. You have a free will choice. If you didn't believe in Jesus because you didn't believe in the church, and I'm here to gather from the hedges and the highways, friend, I want everybody to come home. I don't care what you've been doing, friend. My father raised me up out of hell. I have forgiveness because I ask for it all the time. And now when Satan comes and tries to blame me for something in the past, I tell him to go pound sand. I'm like, Satan, you're a loser. Go away. Right? His job is, he's not really a loser. He's, he's my adversarial thought. I have an adversarial thought in my head that is always trying to condemn me. And at the, on the final day, if I'm not in relationship with Christ, he will condemn me because I'll turn my thoughts from God and, and cast myself into the darkness. But I'm not doing things that cause myself to hide my thoughts from God. When I get guilty thoughts that I know that aren't right, I say, Lord, look at this thought. Help me with this. And he says, thank you, Jason, for coming to me. Why don't we get together here and, and get rid of that? And then he'll say, well, what did Jesus say about that? And I'll say, well, Jesus said that I'm not to hurt them. And if you do what you're wanting to do, it's going to actually hurt them in the long run, isn't it? I'm like, yes, Lord. So he says, that's not a good plan. I'm like, no, Lord, because then I'm going to feel guilty, hide my thoughts, and this relationship I have with you is going to go bye-bye, and I'm going to cast myself back into a state or place of mental suffering, which was pure hell, where I used to think about killing myself, and I would drink and get high to, to try to deny the fact that I was being an, a jerk. I was being a narcissist. It was all about me. It was all about what I wanted instead of what my father wanted and what my neighbor needed. And so now I give everything to my father so that he can give me what's mine. I don't care if you believe that. I'm telling you, you can do this too. He will come to you if you believe. I'm not telling you that you're going to get it all at once. It starts off as a mustard seed, and then it'll turn you into a mustard tree. You have to let the Holy Spirit overcome your thought of Satan. But if you leave your house, sit empty. The demons will return and bring friends. And then the condition of the man will be worse than the first. So don't think that you can just go back to your sin and then still enter the kingdom. This once saved, always saved was a lie. You can tell by the words I have just spoke, which Christ spoke first. So this is about truly believing in him and getting in relationship with him. And he who the Son sets free will be free indeed, even if it takes you a little while. The kingdom is a journey. And it gets more and more joyful, and you find more joy, peace, and love as you go. Check it out. Give it a try. All right, friend, we just know that I love you because my Father loves you. And may God bless you and yours.